Hey, Lanky Cyclist here, and it's December in Cleveland, which means snow, cold, ice, disgustingness, and sometimes I don't wanna ride outside, I just wanna ride on my indoor trainer. So I wanted to make a video to walk through my budget non-smart trainer setup. Uh, so for those of you out there who they wanna use Trainer Road, wanna use Sufferfest, apps like Zwift, but you don't necessarily want to shell out the $500 to $1,000 to get a smart trainer. Uh, this video is for you. So I figured I would make a short video today to talk about my budget trainer setup. Now, budget is a very subjective term. Uh, what's budget for one person is not going to be budget for somebody else. I get that. Um, my whole setup here that I have that is Zwift compatible, I don't ride Zwift. I use Sufferfest instead, um, but this could be used on Zwift. The whole setup is about $220. Uh, that's probably a lot more maybe than some people would want to pay on for a uh, trainer setup. But when you compare it to a lot of the smart trainers that are out on the market, uh, which are starting, you know, somewhere four or five hundred dollars for a wheel-on trainer, you know, at up to you know a thousand dollars or even more uh, for a direct drive trainer. And then when you're getting into like the Peloton bikes, the the Wahoo Kicker bikes, I mean, you're talking two, three grand for a smart trainer setup. So let's talk through my budget setup. So let's start with the most obvious thing: the trainer. Uh, so this is a Cyclops Fluid Trainer 2. Uh, Cyclops was acquired by Saris, I believe. Uh, so if you look for Saris, S-A-R-I-S, uh, you will find uh, the Fluid Trainer 2 uh, on their website or sold under that, that brand name. Uh, brand new, those trainers cost $250, so not cheap, uh, but I bought mine for $125 used uh, from my bike shop. Uh, and I'm willing to bet that with so many people jumping on the smart trainer bandwagon, uh, that there's probably a lot of these sorts of fluid trainers just sitting around people's basements collecting dust. Uh, so I would highly recommend you know, going on a Facebook cycling group, going on Craigslist, and just trying to find one of these in your area uh, that you could purchase. If you can't find one used, you might be able to find one new for somewhere in that $100 to $150 range. I know this Nash Bar trainer that we picked up a lot of years ago that uh, my wife is using as her indoor trainer. I wanna say this thing was like $100 when we bought it. Is it as good as the Cyclops? No way, uh, but it's, it's passable. Uh, it'll allow you to spin your wheel in place uh, and it allows you to adjust the resistance. Uh, so it's, it's not a bad option. So once you have your trainer, the next thing that you're gonna need are one of these. Uh, this is a Garmin speed sensor. Um, but uh, Wahoo makes some. Uh, I think there's probably several other brands that, that make these sorts of speed sensors. If you just buy the sensor alone, that's $40. Um, but uh, they also sell these in a bundle uh, that comes with the uh, Cadence sensor as well uh, for $70. So what the speed sensor is gonna do is, obviously it's gonna, it's gonna use the number of rotations of the wheel, your wheel size, to calculate the speed at which you are traveling. So when you use this uh, paired up to an app like Sufferfest or Zwift, they're gonna be able to calculate the wattage that you're doing using their algorithms. Is it as good as a smart trainer? No, absolutely not, but it's a whole lot cheaper. To function in Zwift, all you're really gonna need is a Garmin speed sensor. Uh, but I do like having the Cadence sensor as well. Like I said, I use Sufferfest, uh, and there's a lot of strength building uh, on-bike sessions that they have in there, uh, which have particular Cadence targets. Uh, so it is helpful to have that Cadence sensor, but it's not necessary. The last thing that you're gonna need for your budget trainer setup is one of these. So this is an Ant Plus dongle. Uh, what this is gonna do, it's gonna allow your speed sensor, your cadence sensor to talk with your PC. These retail for like $20 on Amazon uh, and they give you like a nine, 10 foot-ish long USB cord that you can plug your Ant Plus dongle into and then plug the other end into your computer. Then you can put your computer up on a desk out in front of you while you run your Ant Plus 
dongle all the way down to be close to your speed sensor, your cadence sensor, and if you're wearing a heart rate monitor, it'll be close to that as well. So a lot of the new sensors are both Ant Plus and Bluetooth compatible. So if you're using an app like Zwift uh, on your phone, uh, you should be able to connect up via Bluetooth to your phone uh, and then use that to run the Zwift app. I like to run it directly through my PC rather than my phone. So I need to use that Ant Plus dongle, but that's not necessarily going to be a requirement for everybody else. So $125 for the trainer, $70 for the speed and cadence sensor. It gets us up to $195, plus $20 for the USB cable and the Ant Plus dongle. Gets us to $215 for a budget trainer setup that you can run on Zwift, Sufferfest, Trainer Road, whatever it is. So if you're looking to get the most out of one of those training apps, a smart trainer is going to be a lot better than this setup is. But if you're not riding indoors all that much, uh, if you're not taking your training that seriously, uh, this could be a good option to do. One item that I have not factored into my budget trainer setup is a through axle adapter. Uh, so I'm using an old uh, road bike uh, that's probably like 15 years old. Uh, but if you're using a more modern bike that has disc brakes, uh, you very likely could have through axles. A lot of trainers, especially the budget end trainers, are not going to come with a through axle adapter. Uh, you can buy these off market. Uh, I know like Robert Axle Project, I've ordered from them before. Uh, but you're looking at like $40 to $50 uh, for a through axle uh, adapter. Uh, now, if you're buying like a Wahoo, uh, a lot of times they will sell a through axle adapter uh, as part of the trainer. Uh, but if you're looking for a budget end trainer, that's something else that you might need to factor in uh, depending on the type of bike that you're using. If you're doing a lot of online indoor training, I would also recommend getting a heart rate monitor. I use the Wahoo ticker. I have a whole bunch of those just kind of laying around. I got one free last year through my subscription to the Sufferfest. Um, but I think if you bought one new, I want to say they're like $40, $50. So that takes sort of the whole budget trainer set up to somewhere around $250, $260. Not cheap, I know. Doesn't necessarily fit with everybody's budget. But compared to the $500 to $1,000 smart trainers that are out there, uh, this is a much more cost-effective option that will allow you to do Zwift. It will allow you to do Sufferfest. The app is not going to be able to control your resistance or help you hit specific power targets. Um, but with a little bit of just managing the, the shifting, uh, the resistance on the trainer, you can, you know, get by. But if $250, $260 is still too much money to spend on your indoor cycling setup, just forget about all the technology. Just find yourself a good, cheap, fluid trainer for somewhere around $100. Maybe you can get lucky and even get one for less. Maybe you have a friend that has one sitting in his garage that he's not using that you can borrow. Uh, so just get one of those and just ride it in the basement. Five, 10 years ago, that's what everybody was doing. We didn't have fancy trainer apps. We didn't have fancy virtual worlds. We just had nothing. Or we maybe had some, some videos that you could watch and sort of ride along based on just effort. I know GCN has their training channel now. Uh, there was like this Australian group that had a few trainer videos uh, that they had posted up on YouTube that I remember using a whole bunch like five years ago. Uh, so there's tons of trainer cycling videos out there on YouTube. Just find one of those and just ride your trainer. You don't need all the fancy gadgetry. But if you do want something that's going to work with Zwift, uh, this is a cheaper alternative than maybe getting one of the smart trainers. So thanks for watching and remember to enjoy your ride.